Okay, so this is about the seventh time that I've recorded this video. Uh, every time it's something's happened or, or just something has happened that made it not work. But we're going to get this video edited for you. We're going to get recorded. We're going to put it together for you. I have an editing video start to finish. It's about 45 minutes long, so that's why I'm a little frustrated about it. But we're going to make it because I want to make sure you guys can watch this video. I was just at ClickCon last week, and I uh, worked with so many amazing models, and I took a really epic photo of a model by the name of Nikki. And what we're going to do is I'm going to edit this and show you guys how you can make this photo look really painted, that, that super painted look that's super popular. Uh, Glenn Dewis has created a really good look on it. Uh, Eli Infante. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of other really great photographers that do this like almost painted look. And Joel Grimes is another one. So I'm going to show you guys a little technique on how I do it. Uh, and and basically start to finish. Uh, no editing, no anything. I, I'll cut out like any downtime between loading programs and stuff. But we're going to go start to finish on this thing. It should be about 40 minutes or so. So kick back, grab your stylus pen and your Wacom tablet. And let's get going on this. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open this in Lightroom. The programs you're going to need for this, Lightroom, Photoshop, and Luminar AI. Luminar is what we're going to do with the skin cleanup on the face and stuff like that. The initial skin cleanup, I should say. So those three programs are what you're going to need. You're also going to need Eli Infante's Photoshop Actions 2021 pack. I will leave a link in the description of the video on where to buy these. It's not expensive, and it will literally save you hours off your day when it comes to editing. And for the colorization, you're going to need Glenn Dewis's Color Creativity Pack, number three, I think it's called. I'll also leave a link to that, uh, and you can download these. Now, the, the lookup tables you don't really need, the Glenn Dewis lookup tables you don't really need, but uh, it is basically going to make your life a lot easier if you use them. So I highly suggest it. Let's get going on this. So you're going to need Lightroom Classic, uh, Luminar AI, Photoshop, the Eli Infante Actions, and the Glenn Dewis lookup tables to create this exact look that I'm going to get. Let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new technique that I just learned. Uh, a newly acquired friend of mine, Victor Dupre, taught me this, and I want to give him a shout-out on it because this is super cool. But what you're going to do is it's kind of like cheating or, or tricking your settings. And what you're going to do, you're going to bring your highlights down. Uh, I'm not going to take them all the way. You're going to bring your whites all the way down, or most of the way down, so 80-ish. 80, 80 then what you're doing is you're going to bring your shadows up, and you're going to bring your blacks up. Now, by doing that, you're giving it a super sharp look, but you're also like introducing a lot of brightness to this. Where you can offset that is actually using your contrast. I'm bringing that contrast back down. So by just doing that, I mean, you already see that you have a completely different photo already. And we haven't even really done anything to it. Just moved a couple sliders. So the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to take our texture and move it down. So we'll give it the whole photo and overall smoothness. And then we will uh, basically call that good. Uh, I don't really think I need vibrance in it or uh, really create an S-curve for it. I like the way it looks. I might just kind of tweak the S-curve just a tad. But, yeah, I think it looks good. I think right there is where we're going to want it. Let me uh, bounce my camera up just a little bit here. There we go. I think that's where I'd want it. That's, that's, that's looking good. Uh, so let's take it over into Luminar AI and work on the face. So what you're going to do is you're going to right-click. You're going to hit edit in. You're going to go down to Luminar AI. And we'll wait for this to load. And we'll edit this in Luminar AI. So we are now in Luminar AI. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do any of these uh, templates or essentials or anything like that. We're just going to hit edit. Now, this is an older version. I haven't updated Luminar AI yet, so don't yell at me. Um, but... Uh, what we're going to do, the only difference is, is you would see a little thing that says like bokeh right here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the face here. So I'm going to zoom into the face so we can see the face. And I'm going to see how many more times I can say face. Uh, and basically, we're going to lighten the face a little bit. Not much because we don't want to like blow it out, but we do want to bring that face light up a little bit. Um, I don't want to slim the face. She already has a really thin face. And so I will click on eyes. Go down here. 
And eye visibility, I always basically leave it 80 until I see what's going on after that. So eye, iris flare. Iris flare is where you get that uh, reflection that kind of looks like the Westcott highlighter. It's kind of a, a fake way to, to create an eye pop in the bottom of it here. Um, I'm going to bring the eyes up just a little bit because I am making this a uh, more like dramatic, artistic style photo. So uh, eye whitening, don't need that. Eye enhancer, we're going to go kind of high up on here. 70%. And I wouldn't remove any dark circles. I wouldn't remove any or improve eyebrows. I think they're fine. So I'm going to click on skin. And I'm going to bring the skin up to about 50% and see what that looks like. Now, this skin only touches up the skin on the face. It doesn't do the rest of the body, uh, but which I'm fine with. And then we will bring the shine down just a little bit. Ah, shine down. And there we go. Just a couple quick sliders. And that's really what you can do with this. So I'm going to hit apply. And this is going to jump back over into Lightroom. Okay, so we're back in Lightroom. I'm literally not going to do anything in Lightroom. I just wanted to get it back. I always try to jump back to my original program, which is Lightroom. My apologies, I'm bumping the microphone. Uh, uh, yeah, I always try to get back to my original program. That way I know that I'm uh, keeping it where it needs to go. So now what we're going to do is we're basically just going to right-click again without doing anything, and we're going to edit in Photoshop. Okay, so now that we're in Photoshop, we are going to uh, get rid of a lot of these blemishes and clean this photo up and add our final color and make this photo a banger. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer by hitting Control or Command J, uh, creating a new layer. The reason I do that is because I don't want to mess up that original layer. Uh, if we completely mangle the photo, at least we know we still have the original photo, we can just start over again. Uh, with that being said, it's going to be pretty hard to mess this photo up because what we're going to do is we're going to use Eli Infante's actions to do the frequency separation and the dodging and burning. Now, if you've ever watched any of my YouTube videos, I do have some uh, frequency separation tutorials. Eli, Eli has made it so much easier to do this for everyone, and I cannot praise these enough. It's just incredible. So what you're going to do... You got your photo. I can already see there's like something, there's a hair like or something that's right here. We get rid of that, get rid of this. If you zoom in on her, you can see there's some acne that needs to get be gotten rid of. Uh, just a, a couple little bumps here. I'm going to get rid of her piercings here and all these stray hairs. We're going to get rid of all of that. And it's super, super, super easy if you just follow these steps. First thing you're going to do. Open your Eli Infante Actions. Now, if this Actions panel is not in on your Windows or on your uh, Photoshop, hit Window and hit Actions. That'll open this up. If you've already imported your Eli Infante Actions, it'll be on here. If you haven't, just download them, then go to Load, and then find it in your Downloads or wherever you save it to, and then it'll just pop up. This folder right here is going to save so much time for you. So what we're going to do... We're going to open that folder. We're going to find this FS Infante 2021. We're going to go down. We're going to highlight it. Go down here and hit play. It is really that simple. Well, there's one more step, but it is pretty much that simple to create frequency separation. So now what you need to do is you need to find somewhere that is uh, has some detail and look at it and make sure your median is, I usually sit it between like, 10 and 12, that's probably a good spot. So let's just go with like right between them. Let's go with 11 and then hit OK. And this is just going to finish up. And this is so, so easy to do frequency separation now. This is done. Frequency separation is done. Now what you need to do with it is you need to make it uh, more natural. Uh, so what frequency separation does is it basically creates two layers. It creates a texture layer and a color layer. That way, if you mess with the textures, you don't mess with the colors and vice versa. So you can kind of uh, fix blemishes without fixing or without changing like the skin color or making it look weird or anything like that. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to open this folder that has been created. It's called FS2020, uh, and we're going to highlight the texture. Now, what I do is I use the clone stamp tool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And basically, you're, remember, you're just messing with the textures. You're not messing with the colors. So what you do is you're just going to select an area that looks pretty smooth and soft. 
and we are just going to get rid of some blemishes. And what we're doing is we're messing with the texture, but we are not messing with the lighting. And look at this. Look at this, guys. We are just cleaning up the texture and not the lighting. It is that simple. You're basically just creating or just using her skin as a point to get rid of blemishes. Bringing in her freckles. And now you are, with this technique, you are going to add a little bit more freckles. If they have freckles, uh, you're going to kind of bring in some of the skin a little bit. But we're going to fix it too. So, how's my brush doing here? Let's make it a lighter brush. There we go. Now I can paint a little bit more. I haven't used my uh, my stylus pen in a long time. I kind of miss it. Look at that. So all that hair that we were worried about that was on the face, gone. Just like that. gone I mean, we can even take it and go down here and find this one now this one's going to be a little bit different because it's on the color layer because there's no detail to it so we can do this but then we're also going to have to highlight this color layer and then do the exact same thing and then just try to match it up Let's see if we can uh, use the heel brush to kind of fix this too. Let's see what that does. Here we go. Makes it a little bit less noticeable. There we go. Now we're looking better. <clears throat> okay. Back to the texture here. We're going to go and get rid of any like skin marks, skin blemishes, stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whoops. Clone stamp. Clone stamp. Ear piercing's gone. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get rid of the shine in her nostril here too there we go just kind of take that away so it's not so uh, shiny shall I say <laughs> We're going to do right here on her skin is a either a bug bite or a scratch. Now I'm also going to have to do that color layer because it's a color too. And there we go. Bob's your uncle, they shall say. <clears throat> Okay, so the next step we need to do is we need to uh, blend the skin. 
Uh, and this is another frequency separation uh, thing that you can do. So we already touched the texture. Now we're going to do the color. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab, right click, we're going to grab a mixer brush. We're going to leave it pretty much the way that it is. And we are basically, what you're going to do, what this does is it basically uh, think about it as a brush that's wet and you're just mixing colors instead of just painting. So what you're going to do is you're going to just blend these spots where there's dark and light touching each other and just kind of blend the two together. And what you're doing is you're basically working with that dark layer that you had under there. You just want to blend them. I suggest making sure your brush is on the softer side. Uh, your, as far as hardness goes, I'm all the way down. Wet 80, load 75, mix 90, flow 100, and the direction doesn't matter. And you're just blending them. So this, this dark area here, you're going to bring up. These areas, you're going to bring that black up. Whoops. And you're just creating a softer look to everything. So I just kind of blended this cheek line here a little bit. Got, got everything all set up. Uh, da, 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 da. You're still kind of touching this areas up, getting a much more natural feel to it and pushing it down. So now when we go back and look at it, we can see what we've done. And of course we've created a much more natural look to it. We're going to fix this line just a little bit here in a little bit when we do dodge and burn. Uh, but you can come in here and you can do the same thing. Up in here, we'll bring this blur out a little bit. Softening all these areas that have blending marks, or blending areas, I should say. And there we go. We are where we need to be for this photo so far. Now, you are done with frequency separation. What we're going to do now is we're going to do some dodging and burning. <laughs> 
So what you want to do, you want to close this layer and just have it highlighted. Go back up to your actions and hit dodge and burn 2021 and hit play on that Eli Infante action. It takes like a half a second. This is ready to be dodge and burn now. Now I know you see it and you're like, but it's black and white. These are helper layers. I personally don't use the helper layers. I just kind of eyeball it with the dodge and the burn. Now, dodging and burning. For those of you who don't know what dodging and burning is, burning is when you darken shadows, and dodging is when you lighten highlights, and then you create this uh, perfect mixture of the two. So you want a regular brush now. You want it to be white. You want your f opacity to be down to, like let's say, like 30, 35, 33. And then we're going to turn that flow way down too. We're going to make sure where our brush is still not hard at all, no hardness. And what you're going to do is zoom in. And we're going to start creating more definition. So we're on the burn. So that means we're going to be doing darker areas. We're basically just going to start coloring in these darker areas. Now, not a lot. You don't want to overdo it. But you want to just bring these up. I'm going to bring my opacity up a little bit on my brush. Here we go. So like all these these dark lines, that's what you want to... And See, I told you we were going to fix that. All of these dark creases. Go over them. Creating more definition in them. That one I don't like. This one will do. And this is where you'll actually uh, do some of this in the clothing, too, because that's what's going to make the clothing pop is dodging and burning in the clothing lines and stuff like that. So here, do this one. We did that one. Um, we'll do these down here and bring these darker. This is where you get that HDR style look to a photo. My apologies for being very quiet right now. But I just this is something that I really like to focus on and make sure that we're doing the right thing. Darkening this area. Darkening this area right here. Coming down that line. Oops. Coming down this line. Getting some of that. Doesn't have to be crazy. Darkening this area. And then we're also going to do her, like, shadows right here. We're going to do these. We're going to go up this line right here. We're also going to do this side. Then we're going to go and we're going to click on dodge. We're going to do the exact same thing with the highlights here. So we're going to bring these highlights in. Now, this is a pretty bright photo, so I'm not going to do too much. But just kind of touch some of these areas here. Just kind of lightening the light light areas and darkening the dark areas. This is dodge and burning. A lot of people ask me, what the heck is dodging and burning? You're watching it right here. There's also a spot in her dress here. We'll get rid of that here in a minute, too. You can tell I haven't used my stylus pen in a while. I'm all over the place. Let's actually, uh, let's dodge and burn our hair a little bit here too. So we're still in a dodge. So we're going to lighten up this. Bring this up. Lighten this area here. Go around that way. <clears throat> and then we'll go to the burn. And we'll burn some of this darker area here. Now 
Look at that. Wow, look at that. Look at that. So this is the dodging and burning. And then the frequency separation. And then that's the original photo. Incredible. Looks fantastic. You honestly could probably leave it right here and get away with calling that a banger. I don't want to, though. I want to add some color to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is control... Option, Shift, E on a Mac. I'm not 100% sure what the keyboard shortcut is for Windows, but what you're going to do is you're going to create a layer out of all these merge layers. <clears throat> Once you've done that, you are going to want to add some color. But before that, I do that, I'm going to fix her shirt. I'm going to cheat and fix her shirt and get rid of these. Clone stamp. Whoa. Whoa, what happened? There we go. Clone stamp tool. Size up a little bit. Grab here. Don't tell anybody I cheated. There we go. All right. So let's add some color. And the way we're going to do that is by using this little grid right here in the adjustments called color lookup. Now I'm going to use the Glenn Dewis. Like I said, if you want to end right here, you could probably end right here and the photo looks awesome. I'm going to create it, take it a little bit further and add some color to it. So uh, what I'm going to do is load the lookup and then I already have all my lookups stored in here. So I'm going to click on it and be like, boom, look at that. Isn't that an incredible photo? Like I love it just like that, but I want to make it look a little bit better. So I'm only going to put one layer. The one I made last night, I made a couple, a couple layers on it. I think I like literally just want to leave that one layer. Like, let me see what a couple others look like on it. Like they all look good. Maybe we will uh, add this Rosa one and then take it down a little bit. Okay. So once again, you could probably stop there with this photo, but I want to bring some natural color back to her here. So we're going to take both of our lookup tables, layers, um, and then we're going to hit the little cheeseburger stack here, or hamburger stack, new group from layers. We're going to name it color. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make a mask on it, and we're going to just mask her out. So we're going to get in here. And we're going to make our brush a little bit harder here. 50, 60%, somewhere right around there. And we're just, whoops. Boom. Oh, make sure you're on a brush. Do, 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 do. There we go. And we're going to color her back. Just kidding. Bring all this back up. Opacity up. Flow up. Now we're going to color her. There we go. Now we're bringing some color back into her, some life back into her. Now this is where you just bring all your coloring back in on her, and then we will adjust it from there. Just coloring in, trying not to get the dress. I just want the skin tone. And what I'm doing is I'm, I've masked her out, and I'm using the black brush to mask out what I don't want. And then the, uh, the white brush to keep the color where I want it. So there we go. Bring that back here. Bringing these hands back in, getting some color back into them. And going through, getting all this skin. Now, typically with a shot, I usually only do this technique on like their face. 
and maybe a little bit of their hands because usually their their whole like full arms aren't hanging out. So you typically don't have to do this much with a photo. But she got her arms all hanging out, so we got to do all of it and make sure it looks good. Let's zoom in just a little bit, see how we're doing. Whoops. Looking good, looking good. Getting on that edge. Coming down here, hitting on that edge. So this right here is really where a stylus tablet pen situation like a Wacom stylus really comes in handy because trying to do I was trying to do this last night with my mouse and it's like trying to do a signature with a mouse like you know it just looks like a four-year-old did it that's kind of how you're treating your art by not having one of these I have the Intuos, the Wacom Intuos Pro Medium, and I really feel like it's the exact size that I should have. I absolutely love this thing. Now, with that being said, I don't write enough, so I get hand cramps really quick using this thing. So I do have to take a lot of breaks. But for the sake of this video, no breaks. All gas, as my friend Bob would say. My buddy Bob owns uh, the Stadium View Bar and Grill in Green Bay, and that's like their slogan. It's all gas, no bleeping brakes. They have it on shirts and everything. I mean, I see him post it all the time. He says it. Whoa, whoa, what did I do? Cancel. No. I'm trying to save it here or something. So I went and I got a little bit of the dress there on that last touch. So let me show you how to fix it. So basically just get your white brush back out. Get in there nice and close. And boom. So I think we are just about good on the dodge or on the uh, masking. Let's zoom out. So now you can see that it looks a little awkward. Like she's way too saturated compared to everything else. So what you're going to do is go into your properties right here. It's these little guys, and if it's not there, just hit Window and go down to Properties and hit Properties. This density, we're going to start taking it down again. And what you're doing, this is all the way. Your mask is all the way there. This is a full mask. So you just want to find a happy medium that looks really good between the two. And I think it's right about there at 50% because you still have color on her, but you also really have... A good look to her as well. I mean, in all actuality, that's probably a finished photo. What I would do is I would do one of these and uh, find my signature here. Don't tell anybody the font I use. We'll go here. And we're going to go Josh Russell text. And bring my watermark down a little bit more. I don't want it that big. There. And that's a done photo, guys. That is exactly how I would make this photo look. That's a done artistic painted looking photo. If you zoom in on this thing, I mean, you can really see, like, detail in that face and those eyes. Just how awesome it looks. I am so in love with this photo. Incredible. So that is going to do it for this lesson. Hey, 36 minutes, roughly. We got it down. The first one I did was like an hour and 20 minutes, but like I said, I was using my mouse and stuff. So thank you for being a Photog Nation member. Thank you for checking the video out, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Once again, if you need anything, please let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.